Yeah, this build's just really fun. That's all, that's all I gotta say about it. <laughs> like, like it's, it's, I get, I got asked so many times in the past, and people always ask me, how do I slot, like, I have the Shrine Staff, I got this cool, I got this uber unique staff, like, is it used in any builds, I really want to run it. And I'm always like, you can, and then I have to go through some, like, long-winded explanation of how to slot it, what aspects to remove, what to move where, and it's just annoying, and, oh, that's the son of Malthus. Hey guys, this is Lurkin from Mobilytics. If you're feeling charitable, feel free to hit me with the sub. Uh, <laughs> so this is this is a Spear of Lycander build. I got asked six trillion times, is there any builds with Spear of Lycander? Like, how can I slot this into builds? And as you'll see, I tried to slot it in with Ball Lightning, and it just felt bad. Just the, the loss of two aspects and the resource general and stuff. It, it, the Spear doesn't feel very good on mana spending builds. So I'm going to say I'll leave it at that. You can run it, but I don't think it's going to be as optimal as if you run it on a basic skill build. So this is a spark build. Uh, and in, in addition, you can run this with spark or arc lash. Nothing in the planner changes whatsoever. It's built so that you can run spark. You would just take out these seven points and you put it five in arc lash. You take enhanced arc lash and then you take glinting. That's it. That's the only changes that you need to make. Um, I, I found it worked best with these because with the basic skills because you're not spending mana you don't have to worry about that so you can just spec it normally so the build is so the build would be Shaco but if you don't have Shaco you're gonna run an aspect of might helmet you can run disobedience if you want try the two see what you like better but ideally heal your, here you're gonna want total armor cooldown reduction basic skill attack speed and the last spot I would personally take max life I just I have intelligence you're gonna want raiment because this build is a teleport fireball enchant build uh, I'll get back to that later so you're gonna want raiment for the stuns when you teleport then you're gonna want pain gorgers uh, you get marks through crackling energy and through lightning spears that you throw out so that's really nice. It adds a lot of damage. Next, we're going to take to Bolts. That way we get 40% damage when we teleport. Not when we evade, teleport, and chant. Just when we teleport. Uh, flicker step so we can have permanent uptime on unstable currents by evading around. This is, we're just bopping. We're bopping around. Next is the Spear. Uh, the 52.5% damage roll. That's worth about 5-7% to damage because it's additive. It's fine. It's a pretty nice roll. It's all damage. Remember, it has 30% attack speed. 24% crit chance and 42% uh, chance to stun. And because of the seasonal blessing, where we get 50% increase the shrine duration, you see, as you can see, we have this 20 seconds here. Uh, that becomes 30 seconds, and then it can only occur every 30 seconds, so it's just permanently up. Uh, and as you saw in that first clip, I if you find a son of Malphus or like a, a butcher or something, just fish for a shrine and just nuke him. It's pretty nice. Next, we have a ring. This is exactly what you want. Uh, crit chance, vulnerable damage, lightning damage, and max life. Uh, you could give up max life for damage to the close, or you could give up lightning or vulnerable for damage to the close. Up to you. You're going to want adaptability on here. Even though adaptability doesn't spain, doesn't scale the pain gorger's damage, it's still it's a ton of damage that you get from the basic, so it's great. Next, we have Telrasha. Uh, for 45% damage, we got ice blades, we have lightning damage, and then we get uh, fire damage from just touching somebody with a flame shield. And then this one's going to be up to you. Um, but this build does have Asus Ferocity with Ancient Flame for like Giga attack speed. Because you get 75% attack speed. And that does equate to like a like a 60, 65, 70% like attack bonus. Like damage bonus just because of how many you're putting out there. And on this you're going to want 3 ranks of the Conjuration Mastery. It's really the only passive that this build can utilize. Because we're not utilizing Burning. Uh, so three ranks of conjuration mastery. You get you you know you get six to ten conjurations out when you're un unstable, and this is also why we run ancient flame and Asus ferocity so that we can spawn more shock skills during unstable currents because each cast uh, spawns a shock skill. Then you're gonna want this is probably the amulet. This is exactly what you want on the amulet. Cooldown speed, uh, cooldown reduction, movement speed, and total armor. Uh, so without a potion, we end up at 8,800 armor, and if we use a 900 armor potion, we set at a breezy 10,000. 
which isn't the 13,400 cap that you want for T-100s, but as we saw running on some of the builds, running at 5,800 armor, it's totally fine. And then if you were to put Shaco on, you end up with 8,600 armor. And then probably around 6,000, 6,200 or something without it. Oh, maybe more, actually. You'd get a lot more. Let me do the quick math. You'd end up around 7,300 armor. 74, 7,500 armor. Sorry, I digress. So this build is a teleport fireball enchant, and the skill tree is set up. That way, when you are bossing, you just do a quick swap to ice blaze enchant, because fireball enchant's useless. So you get you get uh, scaling through conjuration mastery here, and then you get a lot of cooldowns off your skills. So that's really nice. And it's, it's free, it's simple, you don't have to change any skill points, you just go like this. When you see a boss, you see a butcher or something, or you hit flame shield and just swap it real quick. Uh, unless you have a shrine and you're going to nuke them, but that's fine. So let's get into the skill tree. So as I said, it's spark or arc lash. doesn't really matter. You just move these points over to here. Uh, we're we're going to take three points in fireball so we can get the destructive one, so we get a little bit more damage out of it. Uh, next we take chain lightning. Uh, and the reason I take chain lightning, the points, is so that it can make crackling for me for the build. Because of the crackling that's... Pul so the crackling that's pulsing off is marking enemies with pain gorgers. And the reason I did that is because I opted to take glinting spark. Uh, it doesn't really make a difference whether you take glinting or flickering. You're going to get a bunch more crackling energy out of flickering. Uh, by glinting, you're going to get more crit strike damage. So if you feel like you're not getting enough crackling energy out of the build, then just take flickering and you should be fine. And then you could probably remove the points here because you're going to get enough out of this. Uh, then we take charge bolts. We just path through and we grab destructive for 25% DR. That's what helps us live. We're going to take three points in Flame Shield. I want the Shimmering and I want the Enhanced. I want the Enhanced for movement speed and this for healing through poison. Max out Teleport, take Enhanced. Uh, that way it reduces its own cooldown when you rain it, uh, stun on enemies, and you get the 30% DR. That's the big one. Max out Glass Cannon for 30% more damage. One rank Elemental Attunement for lucky hit chance to reset one of our defensive skills. So that'll reset. That's kind of nice that we only have two defensive skills in this build. Because that's going to reset our teleport or our flame shield a lot. We do take the three points in Ice Blades. Uh, if you're strictly farming, you don't need these three points. Like if you have Shaco, you, you don't need any points here. You can kind of distribute them wherever you see fit. Nah, I'll leave that up to you where you want. You'd probably put them down here in Conduction. Or you could put them here in Icy Veil for uh, Barrier. Icy Veil would give you longer Barrier. Uh, conduction would give you 9% move speed. Next, we take our Lightning Spear every time it critically strikes it applies vulnerable for three seconds it's got an escalating chance to crit as it clips more enemies and then it stuns enemies for two seconds and we have our six ranks in conj mastery so when we have 10 ranks of when we have 10 contrary 10 lightning spears out or some ice blades during bosses etc you're going to get about 60 percent damage if you have 10 out we can't use mana shield because we're not spending mana one point align the elements, three points in protection. Every time you use one of your cooldown skills on the bar, you get this, and every time you evade, you get this. So it's huge. We permanently have a barrier. Uh, I have to take these three points in ball lightning. You don't really have to, especially if you're if you're running flickering. Uh, this is just so that it can make crackling for me. That's all. And then we are taking one point in static discharge, mainly so that we can get to the shocking impact. Shopping, shocking impact doesn't do that good of damage, but when you have a bunch of lightning spears, uh, flying around you will end up seeing some chip damage on some enemies so it is kind of nice and sometimes you can one bang smaller packs especially in hell ties and stuff you can one bang the smaller packs with shocking impact i'm not sure if this procs the attacks reduce evade on flicker step but it doesn't really matter because you are bopping and booping take all points in unstable currents we do this for the 25 percent attack speed and then in addition we take supreme unstable currents uh, that way, our crackling energies pulses 25% fast, faster, so that we're marking more enemies with pain gorgers. And then we take the three points in electrocution, so enemies deal 15% less damage to us. And lastly, we take Asus Ferocity. Uh, so this is a little flexible. Like if you wanted to put, say, say you wanted to be tankier, you could take Vers and you could put Rapid on the amulet, or you could even take Overflowing and put Rapid on the amulet. So that's that's up to you. But I'm running the, the Asus Ferocity Ancient Flame because it's 75% attack speed. So next, let's get into our Paragon board. And I haven't changed it over yet, so one second. So one thing I did want to go over first uh, before I do the Paragon board 
is I wanted to go over the attack speed buckets. So the way the attack speed bucket works is there's two caps. There's two buckets. They each can get up to 100% max total per bucket. So what we have here is we have 20% from uh, the Lycander staff. And then we have 75% from Ancient Flame because it's on the amulet. So we are at 95%. So unfortunately, that means the attack speed roll on the gloves. Let me just double check to confirm. So that is a straight up attack speed roll. That is not basic skill attack speed. So that's, if you have a max roll on that, 10% of it is going to be wasted. Um, so that does bring into the fray that you could you could run rapid on the amulet, but that's only worth 45. Ancient Flame's worth 75 on the amulet. So even though we are wasting a little bit of attack speed, like if you have perfect rolls on everything, you will be at 110%, and a little bit of 10% is going to be wasted. But what it does is it makes it so that your Pangorger's roll, if you're running this build, the roll doesn't matter. They can be a min roll, and then you hit cap. And then in addition, we have 25% uh, attack speed from unstable currents so we're going to be sitting at 125 percent attack speed over the base 100 so 225 percent attack speed so that's going to be pretty nice and now we're going out of the board all right now that i have refunded all points and created a new board for the 77th time this season uh <laughs> so we're going to start with starter board grab this non-physical damage uh, and then we're going to go into Reinforced, because we constantly have a barrier. We get some nice non-physical and some all-resist from this. And we get 15% DR with barrier. Next, we're going to go into Enchantment Master. So this makes our Fireball... Whatever. This makes our Fireball Enchant do 60% damage instead of 50. And then, But the big kicker here is that it reduces our Teleport Enchant cooldown. So our Evade cooldown there. I'm going to go from like... 12 seconds to 9.8 or something like that, and then increased even more if you have Shaco and uh, Evernight. Grab some non-physical. Uh, we get some dot reduction, whatever. Uh, we grab some non-physical here, and we're going to path up. We're going to take Elementalist. Uh, that's going to round out our all-resist and buff up our non-physical damage a bit more. But the cool thing about Elementalist here is that we're going to get 5% from our lightning damage. And then when we are bossing, we are going to get another 5% from Ice Blades, because that's going to be hitting the boss. And then we will get 5% from when we Flame Shield, when we are touching the boss. So that's pretty big. And then regularly mobbing, mobbing you're going to see 10% on uh, enemies, because this is a per-enemy glyph. So you have your Spark, you have all your Shock skills, that's 5%. And then when the Fireball Enchant goes off, that is Fire Damage. So after one goes off, anything that it touches is going to take uh, another 5% more damage. So that's nifty. Uh, next, we're gonna go into destruction. We're gonna max this baby out. We're gonna take 100. We get 194% uh, crit strike damage here. Uh, what's cool about this is this doesn't work with pain gorgers, but it's totally fine uh, because this is really good for our single target damage. That's why we do take it. This is a non-conditional glyph. I mean, it's conditional on a crit, but it's not conditional on like crowd control or anything like that. So we have to take it. Uh, we're going to grab this damage to elites and this movement speed after elites. I've been digging it, especially because you, you don't have Asus boots with that nice move speed after evade. So this sort of helps bridge the gap. And you are it does increase your walking speed when you're arc lashing. So it, it ends up being pretty nice. Definitely a huge pickup. Next, we take Enchanter. Uh, this buffs our all our non-physical. That way we can cap out our Frigid Fate. And we get a bunch of lightning damage from it, which Pain Gorger just absolutely eats up. And then it buffs our <laughs> it buffs our lightning and our fire resist up from 70 to 75. So that's that's pretty big dub. Next is where is she charged? We're gonna take charged. The crackling energy damage is pretty much a meme. But what's super dope about this is the 15% damage that we get from picking up crackling. Pick up three. Pick up a crackling. 5% damage for five seconds. Uh, you should be making a ton of crackling from the, the destructive chain lightning node and the whatever the node is on ball lightning that makes crackling. So you should be pretty good. And like I said, if you're not, just if you if you, if you don't see good uptime on the crackling, just swap the the spark node from the crit chance one up to the crackling energy one. Grab some. D don't care about the conjuration skill damage. We grab a little bit of all resist. We just have to path through it anyway, and then we grab this non-physical damage, so that's pretty solid. Next, we take Control Glyph. 
So this gives us 1.2x damage to all the enemies that we're stunning. Then we get a decent amount of additive, so this really helps with mobbing. Not, not useful against bossing, but the whole game's not bossing, so we take it. Also, we run out of multis unless you wanted to take like something like Unleash, which I'm just I'm not taking that. 6.7% damage glyph. I'll take this 1.2x against stunned. The way I can nuke enemies. We round it out with Static Surge. I pick up a little bit of stun damage, but we're after the vulnerable damage. So we got 34 dex here for 54 vulnerable damage. So I'll go over to glyphs again real quick. We got Reinforced for Barrier DR. We got Elementalist to, to buff out these nodes and give us some damage. We got Destruction for single target. Got a little bit of move speed after elites. We got a 1.3x Frigid Fate uh, on vulnerable enemies. Uh, we got a bunch of non-physical damage here from Enchanter. Uh, we got Charge for 1.15x damage. We got Control for a 1.2x damage. And then we have Exploit for 1.1x damage. All right, so next we're going to go over some of the tool tips here. So we are maxed on all our resists. We're a little bit overcapped on Poison and Shadow. Which gives you a little bit of leeway with the item power of your jewelry. Next, we're going to do our crit chance. Uh, if we look at that, uh, we're missing 2.2. 2. So we would be at 59.3% uh, crit chance. So that's pretty nice. That's pretty high, you know, all things considering. The fact that, considering we don't have ASUs, so we can thank Spear of Lycander for that, for the 24% crit chance. We have a 194% critical strike damage from the Paragon. Ignore this 341, that's a lie. Uh, next, we have 118 vulnerable damage. Ignore the 161. That's a lie. Uh, we have ignore the all damage as well. That's also a lie because that's <laughs> everything's a lie in these. Uh, that's that's skewed by glass cannon, but our all damage should be 52.5. Next, we have a beefy 388.5 damage with lightning. So that's super dope. Uh, we hit our cap for frigid fate. So we do have the 1.3x from there. Next, we go in our damage with basic. That's 85.8 from items and paragon. Uh, I think that's factoring in. Yeah, so that's the roll on here, the 45.8, and then that's the two in uh, the two topazes on the spear. I have to take topazes over emeralds because to emeralds don't do anything for pain gorgers, but topaz does, and these are a bigger value, and especially at 60% crit chance. So at 60% crit out of 24 because you have two gems that are two emeralds that are each worth 12 you're only getting like 13 or 14 percent value out of that but here we're getting 40 percent additive uh and all we're doing is hitting with basics so that's super nice and it i mean these don't these don't work for like your lightning spears your chain lightning stuff or all those that are coming out but the bulk of the damage is your is your basic skill damage and this buffs up your pain orders this does nothing for us because our ultimate doesn't do alt damage it does it sends out skills so it's skill damage damage with the ultimate you can just if you get a it, can, it doesn't matter what the ultimate skill damage roll is on your flickers damage with conjuration uh whatever damage with the crackling ah uh, whatever uh we got a little bit of damage from close i i have no idea where this is coming from but we have it we got a little bit here uh <laughs> says items of paragon i don't know which one or where uh, let's see, we got 56% damage to elites, so that's from our Paragon, that's super nice. We got a fat 168.3 damage versus crowd controlled from our Paragon, and we got 51.7 damage versus stunned enemies, which is also from our Paragon. We have a good chance to stun here, and we get stuns from our teleport enchant. So our movement speed at base sitting at about 150. That doesn't matter, these don't matter. Uh, we got a 28% movement speed after we kill an elite from our Paragon. We only have 24.3 cooldown, but it is what it is. What are you going to do? That's from the cooldown here, here, and here. So these rolls are important, uh, the values on here, because we only have three cooldown rolls, because we're missing two off of here. The cooldowns are a bit less, so that, that is somewhat unfortunate. Lucky hit chance doesn't really get used in the build. We have our beautiful 50% shrine duration buff from our seasonal blessing. Um, and yeah, that's looking pretty good. Here she goes. Enjoy the gameplay, guys.
So for this one, we're just going to be playing around with Asadora's overflowing cameo. So we lost, unfortunately, we lost Ancient Flame off of, off of it for it. So we just took overflowing, but this is like another, I, I get asked all the time, is this thing any good? And the, long, and the short answer is no, but the longer answer is if content's easy enough, it can be kind of fun. So... Here it goes. So yeah, in, in all honesty, uh, just I'm just memeing. I'm memeing so hard. The con this content is so easy. These T hundreds are just sort of a breeze. Like I don't even know what to do anymore. I got Ace of Doors. I got a Shrine Staff. Just meme away with a half sashay. <laughs> Let's see if I can come up with something even funkier.
Wasn't that a pretty song? So, despite the death to the butcher, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave this in, and I'm gonna explain why I've built this. This is actually a perfect showcase as to why I built the shrine staff builds to use either arc lash or spark. You saw in that whole run, my mana even <laughs> even without ancient flame, my mana felt terrible. Like, I was constantly running out of mana. I wasn't really getting much value out of Elementalist. So if you do go this route, probably drop Elementalist and just run something like Conceited. Because I was definitely... I have 168, and I was definitely below <laughs> below the, the 100 mark for a lot of that. So the issue with the Shrine Staff, with mana spending builds, is unless you have Starless... Once you have Starless, yeah, it's going to feel a lot better. But if, if this is your only uni uber unique... Or say you, it, Shaco would help a little bit because of the resource gen, but I only had two resource generals because because this was the only Uber that I had on, and the damage just wasn't there because I was missing Evernight and Genesis. So like bare bones, this build doesn't this build felt a lot better with with the basic skills with no Ubers than it did with the core the core or the mastery skills that are mana spenders with no Ubers. The mana felt bad, and as you saw with the like with the butcher, what I was trying to do when I ran away from him was I was trying I was fishing for an elite kill so that I could get a shrine so that I could kill him because I wasn't gonna kill him. I just wasn't gonna kill him. I didn't have the mana. I don't have the dr in this build. I've killed him. 
on the regular ball lightning build without the shrine staff just because it's more kitted the shrine staff is a double-edged sword it is a good you know you get 52 and a half percent damage that's additive so that's not point that's not 1.525x damage that's just plus 52 it's going to be like five percent damage but you do get a nice 30 percent attack speed 24 percent crit chance and a lucky hit uh 42 percent chance to sun stun and let's go into our seasonal blessings so one big thing here is so shrine staff's normally active for 20 seconds and then after it's over it's on cooldown for 10 seconds and you can get another one at 30 but with the boosted duration of the shrine effects we're able to constantly keep this up because it goes from 20 to 30 seconds activate like being activated and then the cooldown's then over so you have permanent shrine stuffs so i would i, I don't recommend ball lightning with the Spear of Lycander. I just kind of wanted to showcase this. The mana didn't feel good. You lose two crucial aspect slots. Whereas it felt like the basic skills could get away with it more. Because you're getting you have pain gorgers with the basic skills. And then you have adaptability on here for damage. And then you're just running either Ancient Flame or Storm Swell on your amulet. It just felt a lot better. So no, I, I don't recommend ball lightning with spear. But I just I did just want to showcase it. And wasn't that song pretty? <laughs>